Hey everybody, it's me, Steve Schnee, the CD Junkie. And on this episode of CD Junkie, I'm going to be talking about a band called The Clash. Now, I always like to start these videos out by telling you how I got into the band. That was basically early 1978, and I stayed up to watch this one program hosted by Leon Russell, of all people. They were going to be premiering some new Queen video, and I was a Queen fan at the time. Also, I was an Osmonds fan, and I was a Beatles fan, and I was a Monkees fan, and Glenn Campbell fan, and Neil Diamond fan. I loved it all. Jackson 5. Uh, but I stayed up because I wanted to see a new Queen video. So, uh, before that, they decided to play Kate Bush. Loved her. The Jam. Loved them. One of my favorite bands of all time. Uh, Liar. And The Clash. Now, The Clash, I thought, hey, this is cool. But that guy, there's like spittle flying out of his mouth. He's missing teeth. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but I like the song enough to want to check them out. But, of course, I got into the jam and stuff, and that's how I really got introduced to The Clash. So let's go back to the beginning, and we're going to talk about their first album, self-titled The Clash. This is the UK version. This is the classic, you know, Jenny Jones and Hate and War and... Uh, Career Opportunities and Police and Thieves. So many great songs on this. Uh, it was really rough and edgy. You got uh, Joe Strummer, Mick Jones, Paul Simon, and, and Terry Chimes, who was, I think, known as Tory Crimes on that album. I really can't read that. Uh, but uh, this is just, just raw, and it's energetic. It's full of passion and anger, but also a love of creating music. Uh, everyone said The Clash sold out because, you know, they immediately signed to a major label. They, you know, they didn't sign to any independent label, then move over to major. They signed directly to a major. But you know what? If you're a band this good, you need the power of a major label to get behind you and to get your music out there. And this is a credible album. The Clash came out in 1977. Uh, that was not my first Clash album, though, because it was an expensive import at the time. Expensive for me because I was getting an allowance every week. Uh, so this was my first Clash album. came out in 1978 called Give Em Enough Rope. It's produced by Sandy Perlman, who, can you believe this, produced Blue Oyster Cult and bands like that. This was this heavy wall of rock. It did still have that punk energy. It was a different ball of wax than the first album, but it was just as powerful. Safe European Home, Stay Free, Tommy Gun, uh, Guns on the Roof, Drug Stabbing Time, just a, extremely powerful, just this audio thing. Put the headphones on and my ears started bleeding. I mean, okay, maybe not literally, but I mean, Safe European Home to me is still just one of the greatest album openers of all time. Just a wham, bam, thank you, son of a bitch kind of record. Uh, but Give Him Enough Rope is just absolutely fantastic now this album sold and they started getting a lot of press so, so they issued the first album in america it was slightly different as you can see it says the clash on top up whereas the uk said it on the bottom uh and it's also a slightly different um track list they took off some songs from the 1977 album they added some tracks from 78 79 uh but it's still a fantastic album this has complete control as i fought the law uh, and still a lot of the great songs that made the first album. You know, I'm So Bored in the USA and London's Burning, White Riot, things like that. Uh, this is absolutely stellar. This came out in 1979. The end of 1979 came one of the greatest albums of all time. That's right. I believe that. London Calling. What an incredible record. It sounded like The Clash. But it didn't sound like anything that they had put out before. They went off into so many different directions. There's a ballad or two on here. There's reggae. There's country. There's rock and roll. There's blues. This is, oh my God. Of course, you know, London Calling's great. Train in Vain, Mick Jones' vocal on that is incredible. Coca-Cola, Jimmy Jazz, uh, brand new Cadillac, Lost in the Supermarket, Clamp Down, just... <laughs> This is so jam-packed. This came out as a two-record album, but the band demanded that the label charge a single album price. So London Calling, one of the greatest rock and roll albums of all time. Just, again, just take a look at those tracks. There's no bonus tracks here. Uh, there's a version of this that does have a bonus disc, uh, but uh, I do not have that one. And this is absolutely stellar. London Calling, one of the greatest. I can still listen to this, and it just takes me right back to 1979, 1980. 
course, that did really well. And there were still some singles, A and B sides, from the UK that hadn't been released in the US. So what they did is they put out a 10-inch EP called Black Market Clash. They put that out on CD, and they called it Super Black Market Clash, and they added even more material. This has, again, some of my favorite Clash songs. This has One Two Crush On You. It has Capital Radio. I actually prefer Capital Radio second version. Uh, that starts out with this beautiful acoustic guitar uh, intro and then just kicks into that powerful Clash sound. Uh, and, of course, uh, this has Gates of the West, another one of my favorite songs, The Prisoner. This just gathers a lot of stuff together. I wasn't going to feature any compilations on here, but for us Clash fans, this really isn't a compilation. This is just another great Clash album. And later that year, of course, the Clash were on a roll. They put out yet another epic album it's called sananista this time it was a three record album i think they asked the label to charge for a two record price it's not london calling but it's still you know it to me it's kind of like their white album because it just, it's just all over the map uh a lot of it's experimental a lot of it could have been left on the cutting room floor and uh it could have been a, a, a great two record album but then you know here it is 40 years later and we'd be begging for the label to release all that extra material uh so why not just put it out when you can 1980 i mean they just taken so much stuff dub reggae rock and roll uh, it's just, you know, Somebody Got Murdered is great. The Call Up is great. Magnificent Seven. It's Phil UK. It's, <laughs> at times I can't listen to the whole thing in one sitting. Like, you know, I did, like, I think the, the day I brought this home. Uh, but uh, it's so worth your while because there's so many moods and, and, and stuff. Of course, The Clash even grew even more popular. And then out comes the album that everybody seems to know and everybody seems to love. Combat Rock, 1982. Let's be honest, this is a, a fine album, but this kind of sounds like the songs that they would have taken off of a four-record uh, Sandinista. Rock the Casbah's here, Should I Stay or Should I Go, Know Your Rights, uh, and it, it, it's just the album never clicked with me. Uh, 1982, but this ended up being their biggest selling album. Not sure if a lot of people can sit back and listen to it now because it's not, it's just not as great as the other releases. I'm not going to diss it because it's The Clash and they had something worse coming. After this album, Topper Heaton left. Uh, Mick Jones, one half of the creative team, uh, they kicked him out of the band. He went off to form Big Audio Dynamite. That's another video for another day. After a few years, Strummer and, and Simonon, uh, put together a new band and out comes cut the crap and guess what yep focus on the word crap uh this is england amazing song uh and i can't tell you anything about the rest of the albums i've tried to listen to this uh many many times and i have it because it's the clash and i wanted to have a complete collection now I don't have any compilations with me i don't have that big box set uh i just wanted to focus on these albums and they kind of have shunned this album. In fact, in the box sets and stuff, they really don't focus on this. I think This Is England might have appeared on a couple compilations. But they put out that big thing called like the Clash Super Boom Box or something like that that had like all their albums remastered and a couple CDs of rarities and all this other stuff. And this was not included. So I think that they sort of turned their back on this album as most people have. But This Is England, everyone will agree is a great song uh anyway that is it for this video on the clash um i hope it inspires you to go out and get some stuff i mean even london calling give them enough rope self-titled super black market clash anything but this combat rock is friggin london calling compared to cut the crap i'll tell you that much uh but anyway that is it i appreciate you hanging out and listening to me babble about the clash remember to like comment share subscribe because that helps me get my videos out there uh, i appreciate you remember me i'm steve snee the cd junkie